In nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti, Amen, Amen. in Troibod Altari Dei. Adem qualificat juventutem meam. Iudicam e Deus et discerne causa meam de gente non sancta, abomine iniquo de los soroe me. Quia tu es Deus fortitudo mea, quare meripolisti e quare trisit in cedo de ma fligit me inimicus. Emite lucem tuam et veritatem tuam, ipsa me deduxerunt ad aduxerunt in montem sanctum tuam, et in tabernacula tua. Et in tribo d'altare Dei, adem qualitificat juventutem meam. Confite mortibi in cita, ra Deus, Deus meus, quare cistis est anima meod, quare conturbas me. Spera in Deo, quoniam atiu confite mortibi, salutare vultus me, Deus meus. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto. Sicuterat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum, Amen. In tribo d'altare Dei. Adem qualitificat juventutem meam. Adjutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Qui feci celum et terum. Confitio Deo Omnipotente, Beate Maria Sempre Virgine, Beato Michele Arcangelo, Beato Ioane Baptiste, Sanctis Apostolus Petro Paolo, Beato Patre Nostro Agostino, Omnibus Sanctis et Vobis Fratris, Quia peccavi nimis cogitazione verbo ad opere, Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Ideo precor Beata Maria Sempre Virgine, Beato Michele Arcangelo, Beatum Ioannem Baptistam, Sanctus Apostolus Petrum et Paulum, Beatum Patrum Nostrum Augustinum, Omne Sanctus et Vos Fratres. Orare pro me ad Dominum Deum Nostrum. Miseriatur Tui, Omnipotens Deus, et in misis peccatis Tuis, perduca te ad vitam eterna. Amen. Confitio Dei Omnipotenti, Beate Maria Semper Virgini, Beato Michele Arcangelo, Beato Ioanni Baptiste, Sanctis Apostolis Petro et Paolo, Beato Patre Nostro Agostino, Omnibus Sanctis et Tibi Pater, Quia peccavi nimis coditazione verbo et opere. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Ideo precor Beata Mariam Semper Virginem, Beatum Michele Marcangelum, Beatum Ioane Baptistam, Sanctus Apostolos Petrum et Paulum, Beatum Patrum Nostrum Agustinum, Omne Sanctus et Te Pater, Orare pro mea Dominum Deum Nostrum. Miseriatur Vestri Omnipotens Deus et Dimissus Peccatis Vestris, Perducat Vos ad Vitam Eterna. Amen. Indulgentiam absolutionem et remissionem peccatorum nostrorum, tribut nobis omnipotens et misericos dominus. Amen. Deus tu conversus vivificabis nos. Et plebs tua letabi torente. Ostende nobis domine misericordiam tuam. Et salutare tuum da nobis. Domine ex aurea rationem meam. Et clamor meus a te veniat. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirito tuo. Oremum sovrum. Oramus de Domine Benedictus et Domino, quae me demaimus et Domino. Na Domino, Santorum, Domino, 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 Spiritus Domini, replevit orbem terrarum, Alleluia, et hoc quod continet omnia scientiam habet vocis, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Exurgat Deus et dissipentur inimici eius, 
et fugiant qui oderunt eum a pace eus. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio ad nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Spiritus Domini replevit orbem terrarum. Alleluia. Et hoc quod continet omnia scientiam habet vocis. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus bone voluntatis. Laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te. Gratias agimus tibi propter maniam gloriam tuam. Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Fili Unigenite, Iesu Christe, Domine Deus Agnus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tollis peccato mundi miserere nobis, qui tollis peccato mundi suscipe deprecationem nostram, qui sedes ad dexteram Patris miserere nobis, quoniam tu solus Sanctus, tu solus Dominus, tu solus Altissimus, Iesu Christe, Cum Sancto Spiritu, in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum. Et cum Spirito Tuo. Oremus, Deus, qui hodierna die corda fidelium Sancti Spiritus illustratione docuisti, Da nobis in neodem, spiritu recta sapere, et de eius semper consolatione gaudere. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate ius dem Spiritus Sancti Deus. Per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Lectio Actuum Apostolorum. Cum complerentur dies Pentecostes, erant omnes discipuli pari terun eodem loco. Et factus est repente de celos sonus, tam quam advenientis, spiritus vehementis, et replevit totam domum ubi erant sedentes. Et apparuerunt ilis dispertite lingue tam quam ignis, seditque supra el singulos, Eorum, et repleti sunt omne Spiritus Sancto, et ceperunt loqui variis linguis, praut Spiritus Sanctus dabet eloqui ilis. Errant autem in Jerusalem habitantes iudai, viri religiosi ex omni nazione, que sub celo est. Facta autem hac voce, convenit multitudo et mente confusa est, quoneam adiebat unus quisque lingua sua ilos loquentes. Stupevant autem omnes et mirabantor dicentes. Nonne, ece omnes isti qui loco untor Galilei sunt, et quomodo nos audivimus unus quisque linguam nostram in qua nati sumus, parti et medi et elamite, et qui habitant Mesopotamiam, Iudeam et Capodociam, Pontum et Asiam, Frigiam et Pamphiliam, Egyptum et partes libe que est cerca Cerenum, et advene Romani, Iudei quoque et proseleti, Cretes et Arabes, au divimus eus loquentes nostris linguis magnalia Dei. Deo gracias. Alleluia, alleluia. E mite spiritum tuum et creabuntur, et renovabis faciam terre, alleluia. Veni, Sancte Spiritus, reple tuorum corda fidelium, et tui amoris in eis ignem accende. Veni, Sancte Spiritus, et emite celitus lucis tue radium. Vene, Pater Pauperum, vene, Dater Mudorum, vene, Lumen Cordium. Vee, Consolator Optime, dulces hospes anime, dulce refrigerium. 
in labore requies in estu temperies in fleto solatium, o lux beatissime replecodis intima tuorum fidelium. Sine tuo nomine nihil est in nomine, nihil est in oxium. Lava quod est soridum, riga quod est aridum, sana quod est saucium. Flecte quod est rigidum, fove quod est frigidum, rege quod est devium, da tuis fidelibus in te confidentibus sacrum septenarium. Da virtutis meritum, da salutis exitum, da perene gaudium. Amen. Alleluia. Jubi Domine, benedicere Domine, sicurati me. Dominus vobisco. Et cum spirito tuo. Sequenzia sancte evangelii secundum, Ioan. Gloria tibi, Domine. In illo tempore dixit Iesus discipuli suis, si quis diligit me sermone meum servabit, et pater meus dirigit eum, et ad eum veniemus, et mansionem apud eum paciemus. Qui non dirigit me sermones meus non servat, et sermonem quem audistis non est meus, sed eus qui misit me patris. Hec locutusum vobis apud vos manens, paraclitus autem spiritus sanctus, quem amitit pater in nomine meo, Ile vos docebit omnia et surgeret, vos omnia quecumque dixero vobis. Pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam do vobis. Non quomodo mundus dat ego do vobis. Non torbetor cor vestrum neque formidet. Audistis quia ego dixi vobis, vado et venio ad vos. Si diligeretis me, Gaudaretis utique, quia vado ad patrem, quia pater maior me est. Et nunc dixi vobis prius quam fiat, ut quam factum fueret credatis. Iam non multa locor vobiscum, venit enim princeps mundi iuius, et in me non habet quidquam. Sed ut cognoscat mundus, quia diligo patrem, et sicut mandatum dedit mici pater sic facio. Laus tibi Christe. Per evangelii vedit deleanto nostre delicta. The epistle is written in the Acts of the Apostles. Now when the days of Pentecost were drawn to a close, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a violent wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them parted tongues as of fire which settled upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in foreign tongues, even as the Holy Spirit prompted them to speak. Now there were staying at Jerusalem devout Jews from every nation under heaven. And when this sound was heard, the multitude gathered and were bewildered in mind <clears throat> because each of them heard them speaking in his own language. But they were all amazed and marveled, saying, Behold, are not all these that are speaking Galileans? And how have we heard each in his own language in which he was born? 
Parthians and Medes and Elamites and inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya about Cyrene and visitors from Rome, Jews also and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we have all heard them speaking our own language and speaking of the wonderful works of God. The Holy Gospel is a continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and we will make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you have heard is not mine, but the fathers who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while yet dwelling with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your mind whatever I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You have heard me say to you, I go away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would indeed rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes to pass, that when it has come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you for the prince of the world is coming, and in me he has nothing. But he comes that the world may know that I love the Father, and that I do all that the Father has commanded me. So far, the reading of the Holy Gospel. Please be seated. <coughs> Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. I will try to be brief. I was taught in the seminary that the bigger the feast, the shorter the sermon. So we try to do that. Today is one of the great feasts of the church. So great, in fact, that it takes eight days for us to celebrate it in the traditional Roman church. Now, in the new rites of the church, they've cut it all up. That's another story, craziness. But traditionally in the church, it takes us eight days to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And so for the next week, we have literally seven days of Sunday. So remember that, it's a time to feast and to celebrate, to celebrate. In the early church, remember this, that Easter, Ascension, and Pentecost were all considered one great feast that had three particular theological thrusts to them, these different aspects of the one feast. At Easter, at the resurrection of our blessed Lord, by virtue of his suffering, his death on the cross, his burial in the tomb, and his glorious resurrection, he redeems us. He restores us to life. We are no longer enslaved to the curse that was brought upon us by our first parents, Adam and Eve. Original sin, now the sting of it is taken away. We are no longer condemned to eternal death. And we know that for 40 days or so, he has to instruct the apostles to give them these teachings and understandings of what is happening. Now, ascension is necessary according to St. Augustine and according to uh, St. Gregory the Great and St. Leo the Great, all of these fathers of the church. The ascension is necessary because up until now, he is still acting on earth. But in the act of the ascension, he goes up into heaven. And he takes our nature up into heaven with him. 
And that's not all that happens. He is now placed on the throne. He is crowned King of Kings, Lord of Lords, first and last, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. He is everything. And now he, he reigns with an authority so that to him every knee must bend, every tongue confess to the glory of God the Father that he, Jesus Christ, is Lord and King of Kings. And in that capacity comes the Holy Ghost, who will now come upon the church to vivify, to give life to our faith. All of us, we know that at times in our own lives we have believed, but our believing was dead. It's happened to us. We all have people, perhaps in our families, who claim to believe, but there is a deadness to their faith. Their believing is powerless, as it were. They lack the passion of the power of our faith. We know these kinds of people. The apostles themselves were like this. They were still dumbfounded. But when the Holy Ghost comes upon them, everything begins to change. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit vivifies. What a word in English. Vivifies, gives life to, breathes life into them. And so their faith now is transformed into something powerful. Many years ago, many years ago, as a young priest, probably about Brother Martin's age, maybe a year younger, I went on a retreat in the middle of August in Steubenville, Ohio. In the middle of August in Steubenville, Ohio, the weather is extremely hot and extremely humid. You know that kind of feeling where it feels like your skin is something's crawling all over you? You just want to get out of your skin? Well, I went on a retreat and there was no air conditioning. And the retreat master, I forget the na his name, I have it written down somewhere, and I forget the religious order to which he belonged to, but he was one of the most boring preachers I've ever met. And I have to tell you, that's why I'm always compassionate to people who get up to speak. It's not easy. And there were actually two priests, and he was doing the afternoon spiritual conference, which was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a hot, hot, humid day in Pennsylvania, or Ohio rather, with no air conditioning. I was going to skip the talk and try and stay in my bed. My, but my bedroom was like an oven. And I was lying there in the bed. I said, I'm not getting up. But I decided I'd get up. And I went down to sit there for the talk. And he droned on reading a passage of scripture. Droned on. That's what happens in so many of our churches these days, huh? I always like to say to people, after the readings have been done, tell me what the epistle was about. Or if that, just tell me what book it was taken from. But he droned on, and then he began to speak, and it was all priests, and he said, Fathers, if we are not in the Holy Spirit, then we are in darkness, and we are dangerous. If we do not live in and under the power of the Holy Spirit, then we are living in darkness, and we are dangerous to ourselves and to others. That's how important the vivification that comes from the Holy Ghost is to the Christian believer. Once he said those words, I tuned him out for the rest of the talk, and it's been now almost 30 years since that retreat, and I still meditate on those words every day. If I do not live in and under the authority of the Holy Ghost, then I am in darkness and I am dangerous. So, the Holy Ghost comes upon these apostles and the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now I'm going to step out of doctrine and give you my opinion. Just my opinion. I have no authority to say this except my opinion. Between the Ascension and the Pentecost, we have nine days, right? We always make a novena to the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. The, the apostles, the 11 apostles at that point, because Judas had betrayed our Lord, so when we hear of clergy betraying our Lord, while we can be scandalized, of course, remember this has happened from the beginning. 
Woe to them that betray the faith. Woe to clergy, whether they be priests, bishops, or popes. Woe to them who betray the faith of the church. Woe to them. Because this is a treasure given to us by God. We're not allowed to change one iota, one bit of it. We're to live it and to constantly make it new in our lives. Anyway, I'm going to lose my point, which I just did. <laughs> what was I saying? Nobody can remember. Okay. Oh, yes, the nine days. Thank you. So in those nine days, 11 apostles and the Blessed Virgin Mary went into the upper room. For nine days they were there. And I've often wondered if that was the first seminary in the Catholic Church. Because these 11 apostles gathered around the Blessed Virgin Mary. They cried, they wept, they prayed. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Molkut Oleolam Vachem. They said the prayers every day, but they asked her questions. What was he like when he was a little boy? She probably said, I'll never forget, he was 12 years old. And we were going up to temple, and we lost him for three days. She told them stories about who he was. And so I am convinced, this is only my opinion, I am convinced that the first seminary in the world happened those nine days between Ascension and Pentecost, and that the Blessed Virgin Mary was the first seminary rector and professor. Oh, to be educated by the Blessed Virgin Mary. Oh, to be educated by her. If we do not live under the authority of the Holy Ghost, then we are in darkness and we are dangerous. We're dangerous. We're dangerous. That's why we receive the Holy Ghost first on the day we're baptized. The priest who baptized you said, Ego te baptizo in nomine patris, et filii, et spiritus sancti. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That's the first day we receive the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. To set our hearts on fire for the Lord. To put life into our believing and knowing. The next time we receive the Holy Ghost, we receive him in a special way in the gift of confirmation. In the gift of confirmation. Wherein we find out for the first time that the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit are now going to come down upon us. You receive them. I receive them. He's going to receive them when he's old enough. He will receive the sevenfold gifts. Remember these gifts. We know them by heart. Wisdom. Wisdom understanding and counsel and strength and knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord. We receive these gifts, those gifts of wisdom and understanding and counsel and strength and knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord. They buttress us up to face what life shows or throws at us. Remember, in the gospel, our blessed Lord goes on to say, I will no longer speak much with you, for the prince of the world is coming. The prince of the world is coming, and he has nothing to do with me. But he comes that the world may know that I love the Father. You and me, we do battle against the prince of the world every day. Every day. And sometimes the prince of the world is in the way we're thinking. Sometimes the prince of the world lands in our hearts in the way we love, if we love incorrectly. We do battle against the prince of the world every single day, and we need those sevenfold gifts of wisdom and understanding and counsel and strength and knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord so that we know how to deal with ourselves and with one another. Otherwise, we are in darkness and we are dangerous. We are dangerous. If you don't believe me, turn on your television sets and look at what's happening in this country today. Last night, virtually every major city in this country faced urban social terrorism. It was not protests. To protest is to speak your mind. 
When you kill people, there were several, there were a number of people killed last night in this country. One was a store owner in Houston just trying to protect his store. And if you want to, I don't recommend it, but if you want to, you can go online and watch a mob killing him in this country. The prince of the world is about us. We have politicians who call abortion health care. When you call murder health care, that is the prince of this world. <clears throat> that is the prince of rebellion and darkness. We have people who believe that love is, or marriage is all about ushy gushy ooey gooey love. <sighs> Anyone who's married knows that romance pretty much wears off after the second year. You try to get picture, glimpses of, of it again, right? But love is a decision. It's not a feeling. And so the Catholic Church, founded by Jesus Christ, has always said, no, 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 no. The purpose of the end of marriage is the continuation of the human race. The continuation of the human race. The up, mutual upbuilding of the two, of course. But the continuation of the race. And so if you're not open to the transmission of life, you can't have marriage. You can't have it. You can have whatever you want, but it's not marriage. And yet we have politicians who say that people of the same gender can enter into marriage. No! Because they live not under the authority of the Holy Spirit, but in darkness, and they are dangerous. And if you do not have the gift of wisdom and understanding and knowledge, then logic fails. And we see logic failing everywhere in our nation. And in the church, we have some idiots. Raka, although the scripture says, call not thy brother Raka, call not your brother idiot. We have some idiots who lack all logic. When you have an advisor to the Pope, Father Spadaro, actually saying, two plus two does not equal five in the logic of theology. That's heresy. That's idiocy. If I do not live under the authority of the Holy Ghost, I live in darkness and I am dangerous. And so the purpose of this feast is to recognize the power and the authority of God the Holy Ghost. Remember, every single sacrament that is done is done in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Go back to Genesis. The water and the earth was void. And the Spirit of God came over the creation and gave it life. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, it gives you life. He gives you life. He's called the Ruach Adonai in Hebrew. The Spirit of the Lord gives life. And so today, we come before God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and we praise Him. And say, you are my first beginning, my last end. You are everything to me. I bow down and I worship you. I fall before you and I acknowledge no other God but you. No other God. And I give you authority to reign on my mind and to reign in my heart and to reign in my body so that every truth I know is your truth. And everything that I love is loved in the light of your divine commands and your divine truth. And my body will act in accord with all of these things. <coughs> now when that begins to happen, <coughs> our lives change. And people note it. I had a big fight last night with a clergyman from England. I love getting in some of these fights. It's terrible. I have to catch myself and say, I'm not in the Holy Spirit anymore. I've got to stop. But he kept talking about uh, condemning me for saying that our, our military and our police have to show force to keep order. And I had to say to him, I'm not a pacifist, and neither are you. Not if you're a Catholic Christian. We want the peace that comes from God, the peace which surpasses all understanding. Correct? Peace I leave you. Peace, not as the world gives you, do I give to you. So yes, every Catholic Christian wants the peace of God over the whole world. And wants the peace of God in everyone's life. But we're not pacifists. We don't let somebody hit us and turn the cheek and turn the cheek and turn the cheek and turn the cheek. We defend the poor. We defend the vulnerable. 
we take up arms to defend the people of God when necessary. When necessary. When necessary. Neither are we warmongers. But we are not pacifists. We have the right to defend. Anyway, don't want to go down that road. It's a whole other kettle of fish. But we have this right in the power of the Holy Ghost to insist on his authority. You know that in 1925, Pope Pius XI wrote a magnificent encyclical letter called Quas Primas, on the kingship of Jesus Christ. And not just the uh, eschatological kingship. Do you know what eschatological means? Eschatological means the end of time. The end of time, Christ, the king. No, his document, Quas Primas, among the first things, is about the social kingship of Jesus Christ in these days. So if you look at the traditional missal, the feast of Christ the King is different in the traditional missal than it is in the Novus Ordo. In the Novus Ordo, they thought it was insulting the world to put the kingship of Christ on the last Sunday of October and to put emphasis on the social kingship of Christ. It might offend the non-Christians. It might offend those who don't believe. So let's move the kingship of Christ to the end of the church year. And we'll call it the eschatological, liturgical kingship of Christ. <sighs> Metal muffins. <sighs> no, Pope Pius XI, when he wrote Quas Prima, spoke of the social kingship of Christ. And at that time in this Western world, we know that Nazism was starting. There was political unrest in Germany and in England and in France and, yes, in the United States. And there was horrendous racism going on in this country, but not only this country, in many countries. And they were trying to form what later became the League of Nations and then the, uh, uh, what's, what's it called now? The, what's that? UN. UN, the United Nations. They were all, that's all the precursor stuff was happening. Pope Pius XI says, do you want peace in the world? Do you want peace in your life and in your family, in your nation, in the church? Then never mind all of these talks. Peace comes when every human mind and every human heart and every human body is subject to the social kingship of Jesus Christ. Make him the first in your nation, in your life, in your marriage, in your own heart, in the world, in the church, and there will be peace. There will be peace. And we celebrate that because of the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Now... I've just begun the sermon. That was the introduction. No, oh, it goes fast. How does the Holy Spirit come daily into our lives? Well, the sequence called the Vene Sancte Spiritus, the Come Holy Spirit, the Come Holy Ghost, begins to tell us. Come, O Holy Breath Divine, and from heaven shine forth that the light's ray which is thine own we may see. Now listen to the titles given to him by the church, to the Holy Ghost. Come thou Father of the poor, who lives in the Holy Ghost, cares for the poor. Come thou bestower of gifts. Every good gift that comes from God is given to us through the Holy Ghost. Come thou light in hearts of all. It is the Holy Ghost that enlightens us, that lightens our heart. Come, thou consoler. The very word paraclete, paracletus. If you were at the Mass on Ascension, I spoke about the paracletus as the advocate, the lawyer, the defender. But the word paracletus in Greek also means the consoler, the comforter. The Holy Ghost comforts, comforts. It goes on to say, shelter to the hard oppressed. If you are oppressed, burning down other people's property and killing other people will not lift your oppression. It'll make more people want to oppress you. If you are oppressed, go before God the Holy Ghost and ask him to convert the hearts of those who oppress you. Thou mid tears our solace true. You blessed light we implore, Fill thou in our hearts' inmost core, hearts that place their faith in thee. <clears throat> I want to go on, but that's enough. Just to tell you, the Holy Spirit comes in all these ways 
each day. So today, I've said more than enough. Let us pray to God in thanksgiving for the gift of the Holy Ghost who enlightens us, who floods us with wisdom and understanding and counsel and strength and knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord, who is the father of the poor, who is the consoler, who makes soft that which is rigid. That's in the sequence as well. Make soft that which is rigid. See, the Holy Ghost softens us. That gives passion to us. Let's thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. He's praising God in his way. He's practicing for the sermons that he'll preach if he becomes a priest. Anyway, let us thank God for the Holy Ghost. And what I'd like to recommend to you during these eight days, you celebrate. Celebrate the fact that you possess the Holy Ghost by virtue of your baptism, by virtue of your confirmation, by virtue of all the sacraments you've received. And ask God to reign in your hearts. You might want to make a meditation of reading the sequence each day. Or just taking a little piece of the sequence, if you have a missile, a traditional missile, as a meditation. But God, the Holy Ghost, is the fire of love and passion. And he vivifies the church. And so all these idiotic fools who are trying to destroy the church will fail. Because God, the Holy Ghost, is in the church. Enough to think of for these days. Let us ask God, the Holy Ghost, to soften the hearts of the politicians in our nation, to soften the hearts of clerics, and to convert the brigands, thieves, and thugs who are doing such damage in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. <coughs> Credo in unum Deum, Patrem Omnipotentem, Factorem Cere et Terre, Visibilium Omnium et in Visibilium, et in unum Dominum Jesum Christum Filium Deum Nigenitum, et ex Patre Natum Ante Omnia Secula. Deum de Deo, lumen de lumine, Deum verum de Deo vero, genitum non factum, consubstantialem patri, perquem omnia facta sunt, qui propter nos homines, et propter nostram salutem descendit de celis, et incarnatus est de Spiritu Sancto, ex Maria Virgine, et homo factus est, crucifixus etiam pro nobis, Sub Pontio Pilato, passus et sepultus est, et resurrexe tertia die secundum scripturas, et ascendit in cerum sedet ad dexteram patris, et iterum venturus est cum gloria judicare vivos et mortuos, cuius regni non erit finis. Et in Spiritum Sanctum, Dominum et vivificantem, qui ex patri filioque procedit, qui cum patri et filio simul adorator et conglorificator qui locutus est per profetas, et unam sanctam catholicam, et apostolicam ecclesiam confitia unum baptisma in remissionem peccatorum, et expecto resurrectionem mortuorum, et vitam venturi seculi. Amen. Dominus vobisco, et cum spirito tuo, oremus, Confirma hoc Deus quod operatus es in nobis, a templo tuo quod est in Jerusalem, ibi offerent reges munera. Alleluia.
today. Offering us the video, many gallic gems and ties to the precarious garments. What in the spectre of Divina Majestad is to the Pondosha Tonsius, but the Lord of God, or is when he turned in the shell. Amen. In spirit, who made it out is a man in the precarious Judea, but in the name is it is ever which most remains to the one who has been in those days. Vain is that. Navabo interacentis mas me of such a cundabo tarritum domine, Gloriam vocem laudes et anerum universum erudigitu, Domine de Rex. Orate fratres, ut me am vestum sacrificium, ce fabile fiat a gudeum patrum omnipotenta. Suscipia dominus sacrificium de manibus tuis, alladum e gloriam nomini sui, aduritatem corque nostram, tot iusque ecclesia sui sancte. Amen. Munum requesimus domine oblata, sanctificat quora nostra, sancti spiritus, illustratione munda, per dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Pirium tuum, ut tecum vivit et regniat in unitate, iusdem spiritus, sancte Deus. Per omnea secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirito tuo. Sursum corda. Abemus ad dominum. Gratis agamus domino Deo nostro. Dignum et justum est. Vere dignum et justum est, ecum et salutare. Nos tibi sempre tubique gratis agere. Domine, sancte, pater omnipotens eterne Deus, per Christum dominum nostrum. Qui ascenden super omnes celos sedensque ad dexteram tuam, promissum spiritum sanctum hodierna die in filios adoptionis e fudit, qua propter profusis gaudi istotus in orbe terrarum mundus exultat, sed et superne virtutes atque angelice potestates, hymnum gloriae tue cancinunt sine fine dicente. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabo, plenis unceria terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Dei cito clementis e pate, e Iesu Christo, vieni in pronto, e da vostro sumo, Gesù, la Hosanna in excelsis. Ut e cepta abia se benedica, se ic dona, ic numera, ic sancta sacrifici di mano. In primis vue tibi uperemus pro ecclesia tua sancta catolica, quam pace di cari custodiere ad enari ad regio e di miris tutto confitara. Unum cum nomo tutto di quam quam nomo tutto di sto nostro io sed domino vos ad edo quos arque vito e cedo vos dolce vite e contro vita. Memento domino per honom.
Sarebbe una grande garante se prima di quando fosse sempre più vicino. Maria, Gesù, ci te e donne le nostre, Gesù Cristo. Sarebbe a tuo lupo posto, no? Amato, non tu, non peggio, Paolo, Eugenio, Fabio, Ioanni, Stanley, Fabio, Filippi, Bartolome, Medea, Simone, Sebbene, Vieni, 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 Clemente, Sexti, Quinelli, Cipriani, Vieni, 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 Vieni
nobis quoque peccatoribus. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. <coughs> Oremus, precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formatu demus dicere. Pater noster qui es in ceri, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua sicut in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostre, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentazione. Se libera nos a malo. Amen. <coughs> libera nos quesum. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et cum spirito tuo. Et cum ictio consecratio corporis et sancti. Amen. Amen. Agnus Dei qui tolis peccato mundi. Miserere nobis. Agnus Dei qui tolis peccato mundi. Miserere nobis. Agnus Dei qui tolis peccato mundi. Dona nobis pacem. Domini. Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus.
Mater de Omnipotenti, Beata Maria Semper Virgini, Beata Michele Arcangelo, Beata Ioni <coughs> Battiste, Sanctis Apostolis Petro et Paolo, Beato Pater Nostro Agostino, Omnibus Sanctis et Tibi Pater, Quia peccavi in nimis coditazione, verbo ad opere, Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, Ideo precor Beata Maria Semper Virginem, Beato Michele Marcangelum, Beato Ioni Battista, Sanctus Apostolos Petro et Paolo, <coughs> Beato Pater Nostro Agostino, Omne Sanctus et Te Pater, Orare pro me ad dominum Deum nostrum. Miseriatur vestri omnipotens Deus et imisis peccatis vestris, perducat vos ad vitam eterna. Amen. Indulgentiam absolutionem et remissionem peccatorum vestorum, tribut vobis omnipotens et misericors dominus. Amen. <coughs> ece agnus Dei, ece quitolet peccato mundi. Domine non son dignus, sur entre sub tecto meum, sed tantum dic verbo, et sanabitur anima mea. Domine non son dignus, sur entre sub tecto meum, sed tantum dic verbo, et sanabitur anima mea. Domine non son dignus, sur entre sub tecto meum, sed tantum dic verbo, et sanabitur anima mea. Corpus Domine nostri, Jesu Christi, custodio d'animo tu, in vitam eterna. Amen. <coughs> Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, custodi d'anim al tuam, in vitam eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, custodi d'anim al tuam, in vitam eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, custodi d'anim al tuam, in vitam eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, custodi d'anim al tuam, in vitam eternam. Amen. Factus est repente de celo sonus, tamquam advenientis spiritus vehementis, ubi errant sedentes, alleluia, et repleti sunt omne spiritus sancto, loquentes magnalia dei, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirito tuo. Oremus, Sancti Spiritus Domine, corda nostra mundet infusio, et sui roris intima aspersione fecundet, per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Firium Tuum, qui tecum vivi de regnat in unitate iusdem Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnea secula seculorum. Amen.
Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirito tuo. Ite misa est. Deo gratias. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirito tuo. Initium Sancte Evangelii secundum Ioan. Gloria tibi Domine. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apud Deum, et Deus erat verbum, hoc erat in principio apud Deum. Omnia per ipsum factus sunt, et sine ipsum factum est nici cur factum est. In ipsa vita erat, et vita et lux hominum, et lux in tenebris lucet, et tenebre eum non comprehenderum. Fuit homo missus adeo, cui nomen erat Ioannes, hic venit in testimonium, et testimonium periberet de lumine, od omnes crederent perilum. Non erat ille lux, sed ut testimonium periberet de lumine, erat lux vera, cui illuminat omnem hominem venientem in hunc mundum. In mundo erat mundus per ipsum factus est, et mundus eum non cognovi. In propria venit et sui eum non reciperunt, quod quod autum reciperunt eum, dedit eis potestatem filius dei fieri, isque credunt in omini eius, qui non ex anguinibus neque ex voluntate carnes, neque ex voluntate viris, rex Deo nati sum, et verbum caro factum est, et habitavit in nobis, et vidimus gloria meus, gloriam quasi unigenitia patre, plenum gratiae et veritatis. Deo gratias. I would just remind you once again that in the Novus Ordo, Easter ends with this Mass. But in the Catholic traditional rite, Easter does not end until next week. So we have one last week to celebrate uh, the Easter season and the coming of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.